Just when I thought that uh, fielding phone calls from all of you during our call-in shows was the ultimate challenge to the voice of college football, I gave myself the task of sorting out the Big Ten. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, presenting the game we love, best discussion, debate, and analysis. That's our goal. That's our aim. That's our mission every day. Please subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for the notifications. That way you know when we're going live. Let's try to make some sense out of the Big Ten with our power rankings roughly midseason here. Some teams have played six games. Wisconsin's played three. This is 2020. We know what the deal is. So sometime in the offseason, uh, any knowledgeable college football fan would have said, Ohio State's the best team in the Big Ten. Okay, then it's probably Penn State, and maybe Penn State's going to unseat Ohio State, but Penn State's a college football playoff contender. They would be number two. Wisconsin, of course, coming off a Rose Bowl season, always the best in the West. Uh, Wisconsin's right in there. Maybe Michigan. Michigan's still tough. They're a 9-3 and three type team. Iowa's always uh, formidable, of course. And then possibly we've got that, well, Minnesota coming off that 11-2 and two top 10 season. Uh, will they maintain they, that type of status? Maybe Northwestern jumps up into that mid-tier coming off that 3-9 and nine campaign, but they always bounce back. And then you've got those bottom feeders, Rutgers and Maryland and Illinois. But uh, we generally know what the Big Ten is supposed to look like in 2020. Nothing like that. Although, at the top of our power rankings... As expected, Ohio State. They've been less than impressive against a schedule that is only 6-14, but Ohio State is clearly the best team in the Big Ten. Undefeated at 4-0. They have been less than dominant, less than impressive, but they have won easily over everyone. But what could be the second best team in the Big Ten? Indiana with the challenge at Columbus 42-35. So Ohio State... Best team, best talent, perfect record, and maybe the best win in the conference is number one. All right. At number two, I've got Indiana at 5-1. and one. So the Hoosiers started the season with that miracle win against Penn State in Bloomington. That got them off and running. Since then, they have won four convincing games in dominant fashion, including this past weekend against Maryland, giving up just three points to a Terps offense that was rolling before that. So Indiana's one loss playing close against one of the top teams in the country in Columbus, losing to the Buckeyes by just a touchdown. Indiana at number two. Our number three team is what would have been the number one team in our rankings just a week ago, Northwestern. They had the most wins with no losses at 5-0. and They had defeated the best schedule, but then they went to East Lansing and they limped home with a loss in upset fashion just about ruining their college football playoff chances. So Northwestern at number three in our power rankings in the Big Ten at five and one. Then we've got uh, Northwestern's victim, Wisconsin, at two and one, having only played just the three games. Now, of course, Wisconsin is tough every year, a top 15 type team. And they blasted Illinois and they blasted Michigan before turning the ball over five times in Evanston to probably blow the Big Ten Western Division, losing to Northwestern 17-7. to They may just be the second-best team in the Big Ten, but in our power rankings, Wisconsin ranks number four because of their 2-1 in one record. At number five, we've got Iowa. The Hawkeyes came out of the gate slow. They played pretty well. They didn't uh, get blown out. They lost two very, very close games to Purdue. And after leading Northwestern 17 to nothing, blowing that game 21-20, now the Hawkeyes have ripped off four consecutive wins, and uh, we've got Iowa in the fifth position at four and two. Then comes a ridiculous glut of two and um, two and two, two and three teams. All two win teams from numbers six through twelve. We've got seven two win teams in the Big Ten. They're all beating each other. So this is a mess. This is a circus. This could be debated from now until doomsday. <clears throat> but after a uh, Horrible opening showing against Northwestern, losing 43-3. to I've got Maryland in the sixth position. They lost to Indiana this past Saturday. They could have jumped out with 17 to 20 points early, but they blew three red zone opportunities, and then they got trounced by Indiana. But in between, impressive showing against Penn State on the road and beating Minnesota after being down by 17. Maryland is our sixth-rated team in the Big Ten now, 2-2. Two 
produce an interesting club here in the seventh position. They are now two and three. They lost to Minnesota last Friday night on one of the worst pass interference calls that you could ever imagine. It would have been the game-winning touchdown. Most likely, there was only like 20 seconds left to play. They threw an interception on the next play. It would have been the game-winning touchdown. So Purdue lost that one to Minnesota. They also have uh, a loss to Northwestern. They have lost to Rutgers now this, this last weekend. Uh, but I still like Purdue with a uh, strong win against Iowa, and Purdue is our seventh-place team at 2-3. and three. Number eight is Minnesota. So the Gophers technically did beat Purdue, so they should be ranked ahead of Purdue, but it's a jumbled mess between all these teams, and you can't rank them based on head-to-head -head because they all beat each other. Minnesota came out of the gate, lost by four scores to Michigan. Then they went to Maryland, and they dropped a 17-point lead to a team that had lost – eight consecutive Big Ten games by an average of 38 points per game. So they blew this game to Maryland, off to an 0-2 start, but Mar uh, Minnesota's come back in fine fashion, beat a decent Purdue team, again, based on a bad pass interference call, but still won that game, and they blasted Illinois the week before. So we've got Minnesota now at 2-3. and three. They are our eighth-ranked team in the power rankings. At number nine is Michigan State. Now, you talk about an up-and-down season. They come out against Rutgers. They lose by two scores. They turn it over seven times. Then Michigan State goes to the big house as a 22-point underdog, and they go bombs away. Rocky Lombardi, 323 and three touchdowns. They beat Michigan. We thought Michigan might be pretty good at that point. They're not. Then Michigan State plays two horrendous offensive games. They lose to Iowa by six touchdowns. They get shut out by Indiana. They lose those games by a combined 73-7. to But then Michigan State comes back and beats what would have been the top-seeded team in the conference, Northwestern, at home this last weekend. What do we do with Michigan State at 2-4? and four? Well, we rank them at number 9 with the two nice showings against Michigan and Northwestern. But looking mighty horrible otherwise as we're at the place in our rankings where pretty much everybody looks horrible most of the time illinois is two and three gotta credit the illini though they got off to a rough start at zero and three they got trounced by everybody during that time especially minnesota 40 to 14 and wisconsin on opening night but since then illinois gets the last second win against rudkers and then they beat nebraska they killed Nebraska two weeks ago, 41-23. to So Illinois checking in at number 10 at 2-3. and three. Then we've got at number 11, oh, beloved Michigan. Go blue. 2-4. and four. The only thing separating Michigan from being at least one step lower, maybe two, is a triple overtime win against Rutgers. Michigan has the two wins. They beat Rutgers. Yay. And, of course, opening night against Minnesota. Michigan at 2-4, and four, our 11th rated team in the Big Ten. At number 12, we've got Rutgers, and we broke the tie because of the head-to-head -head between them and Michigan. Pretty much did it, although if you really look at Rutgers uh, in going 2-4 um, and four at this point with a win over Purdue, so good for them, and Michigan State, Rutgers in the 12th position. Now, again, a head-to-head -head decided the worst team in the Big Ten. Nebraska might be the worst team in the Big Ten. At the beginning of the season, I would have told you before they played a down that it was Rutgers. Then after watching one to two weeks, I would have said Illinois. Now I think it's probably Nebraska. But Nebraska wins the head-to-head -head against Penn State. I'm going to honor the record in the head-to-head. -head. Nebraska at one and four. They've looked like garbage. They played a pretty good game against Iowa on the road and only lost 26-20. to 20. But the week before, that was really the down point, hopefully, for Scott Frost for Nebraska football in 2020. Losing badly at home to Illinois. Nebraska is just 1-4. And, and so they're number 13. But they did beat Penn State, who finally got off the schneid. Penn State beat Michigan this past weekend, but still... Still can't get out of the last place position 
in the Big Ten power rankings from the voice of college football. Penn State had one in five, one of the top ten teams in the nation to start the season. That's been what Big Ten football has been here in 2020. Despite only playing four or five games, they have taken the eighth-ranked team in the country and made them the worst team in the Big Ten in the span of just five weeks. Those are our Big Ten Power Rankings. Would love to hear from you. Make your comments below right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. And, of course, smash that like button and subscribe. Hit that bell for the notifications. That way you know when we're going live. Best discussion, debate, and analysis. That's our aim. That's our goal. That's our mission right here at the voice of college football.